Hello and welcome to The Holistic Way. My name is Todd Hart. I'm the host and welcome to another episode of the show. I'd like to welcome Debbie to the show today. Debbie, welcome. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, well, I, lo- I, my name is Debbie Radcliffe and I'm the owner and operator of Create-A-Go. Uh, my business is a holistic business. Um, I draw on my talents as a shaman practitioner and a special educator. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually became a special educator so I could work with special people. Oh, cool. Now, explain to me what a shaman is. What is a shaman? So, um, a shaman is, in many different traditions, people who are, um, people would go to for different help on different things, whether it be, you know, uh, talking with the dead or helping with um, illnesses they were having Mm -hmm. and the shaman would draw on working with their guides and the shamanic practices and traditions to go then help that person and that family. Is that Native American? Is it based on Native American? Or is there other? the tradition, it's funny that you ask. Um, Like many other holistic practices, um, a lot of times people draw on their lineage. Mm -hmm. Um, The person that I I studied with, Issa Butardi from um, the Foundation of the Sacred Stream in California, what she does is she goes to the basic roots of all shamanic practices Mm -hmm. of those traditions, and we study um, the common common practices with all of those. So it's not only Native American, it's other cultures, tribes. Yes, absolutely. It's it's the um, the tri- you know the Peruvian, the sorry, um, the the Buddhist, yep. as well as the native. So were they were the shamans looked at as not only spiritual teachers but sort of the medical person to go to if you had something going on physically. If you had something going on physically, um, a lot of times they saw it as. Um, you know, something that was not going, an energetic interference that was going on with you. Something Mm -hmm. that was, you know, energetically interfering so that you weren't able to um, be healthy. Is that similar to the elder in a tribe, the shaman, or is that different? Well, um, it's kind of, the way that I, um, I look at it is they were certain jobs that they had. There's the medicine wor- woman mm-hmm. or medicine person who dealt with the herbs and what have you and whatnot. Right. Um, and then there was the elders of the tribe or a particular person who, the shaman whose job it was to do journeys on behalf of the other. Okay. And at, so at what point in your life did you discover that, and I don't know if the question should be that you wanted to do that or you were that, what, at what, what point did that so, um, discovery happen? So what pulled it all together for me was um, I actually love energy work. Mm. Uh, it's one of those things that I'm really, really drawn to. Um, it's something I've done as a, you know, had always paid attention to as a child. Um, and I had studied many different uh, modalities. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, IET, which is integrated energy therapy, um, <laughs> Reiki, Many magnified healing, many different energy mm. things, you know, studied as an angel light messenger. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd done a lot of stuff, and then um, Issa came into town, and her workshop sh- shop kept coming up to my attention. Mm-hmm. And I found myself thinking, you know, clearly I'm supposed to go and check out what's going on. Sure. Um, within like an hour of being there, um, I got the answers to the whys. Like, mm. why am I doing this? Why do we do it this way? What's going on? Mm-hmm. And you know, through the process of the journey, I'm able to get the answers to things sure. that I need. That's cool. And it, so that, to me, is my way of incorporating you know, all of the practices that mm. I do. You know? Well, I find it fascinating when I interview people, like asking them, when did you discover it? Because some people, they thought, you know, am I crazy? You know, what's, what's going on here? Like, Absolutely. That, that's why I always like to ask that question and know. Well, like, it all how started with a dream with me. Um, to be totally honest, mm-hmm. I um, am an avid dreamer, and um, there are there are prophetic dreams. Hmm. And my dream started. Uh, I was. I'm currently married to a wonderful man, mm-hmm. um, the love of my life. Um, 
but I was previously married to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Also a wonderful man, just not the wonderful man for me, sure. right? Sure. Um, and I had a dream about not only, you know, my ex-husband leaving me, mm -hmm. um, but meeting, you know, f five people and then meeting my husband and my son. You know, I have a 12 year old oh, wow. and I met my son and he was in my arms and I woke up from that dream, you know, in tears mm. because I had no idea that my ex-husband was leaving me and within two months he had left me. Best gift he ever gave me. Wow. Um, but that, at that point it became evidently clear to me that I could no longer ignore my intuition mm -hmm. and the signs that I was being given. I had to follow that path. Did you at that point know for sure or was it once he left, did you then go, oh wow, okay. Well, it was once he left, um, you know, it was once he left and the signs being really clear, mm. I was given certain signs in the dream. Mm -hmm. And then throughout my, you know, throughout that period until I met my husband, I started seeing the signs that I saw in the dream and going, oh my God, I have to pay attention to this. Wow. Um, I do come from a family that is very intuitive. There's mm -hmm. three, um, three branches of my family that are intuitive that I, had, I got it from. So you grew up with that? So it's, it's not that I, yeah, I grew up exposed to it, but I didn't, it's not that my mother practiced it, mm -hmm. um, but I knew that it was there and it was something that I could no longer ignore. And people talked about it? Yeah, and people talked about it, absolutely. Mm. That's yeah. really cool. So tell me about create, is it create I go? It's create a go. Create, create a go. Okay, yes. create a go. Um, it comes from, you know, the name comes from creative indigo. Okay. Um, but it, I was playing with it with my guides in the car. Mm -hmm. You know, I often have those conversations in my head with them. Right. Um, when nobody else is in the car, so right. <laughs> now everybody else can know what I'm up to. <laughs> um, but create a go is, is my business. Mm -hmm. um, I have indigos. Uh, tend to find me young and old. Mm -hmm. So um, I said before that I became a special educator so I could work with special people. Mm -hmm. uh, I was teaching in, I've subbed in different school systems. I'm currently working as a special educator mm -hmm. at um, one job. And I find that children who are intuitive will find me. Mm. Um, I can remember being in a middle school in Providence um, and having a boy come up to me and say, you know, I saw dead kittens. And I'm going, what is there, a sign over my head? Oh my gosh. Okay, um, I'll be with you in a second. Settled the class down and then said, okay, what, tell me about what's going on. You mm. know, and it was just, he was really, it scared him that he saw, and I said, what do you mean you saw dead kittens? And he's like, they were inside the bag, but I saw their, their spirits come hmm. outside. So it was, you know, that was kind of a sign to me that I needed to work with special kids, you know, in that sense of the sure. word. So you, you mentioned the word indigo, and, and someone else I met recently um, uh -huh. in, in a separate uh, thing mentioned working with indigo children. What is What does the word indigo mean? So indigo is a word that, um, a label that Tana, that a woman coined. She was somebody who could see auras. Mm -hmm. um, she had dysphagia. That's when you, and I'm probably using the wrong word. I'm sorry, I'm bad with names. That's okay. Um, but what she could do is her, the way her brain worked is she saw different colors around people. Mm -hmm. And depending upon the color around them, that meant what job they would go into. Okay. Okay. And I would quote them, but it's not something that I use in every day, so I would quote them wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, what ended up happening was around 1975, she started seeing this indigo blue around people. Hmm. And that's where the term indigo came from. And indigos are here to make a difference on our planet. They're here to change the structure of, of the way that things are going. And clearly, clearly you can see, they started coming through in 1975 in large amounts. Mm -hmm. um, there are scouts, because. You know, I identify as being an indigo, but I was born in 1966. Mm. Um, and it took me a very long time to figure out that I was an indigo. Um, they're very intuitive, um, they're empathic, mm -hmm. um, and they're here to make a difference hmm. in the way that we do things. Um, there's also this very definite sense of um, right and wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a lot of intolerance 
for people whom I see as telling a lie. Um, but you know, that's kind of subjective too, you know. And they also have huge hearts, you know. Wow. Huge hearts. They always come from a place of love, you know. It's hard to tell sometimes. Now, is an aura the same as someone's vibration that they're putting off, or is that, are they, cl do, you, do you know? Maybe you don't know, but are, is, that, is that related? Is it similar? Well, people feel auras in different ways, or see auras, or experience, I guess would be the right way of putting that, right? People experience auras in different ways. Mm -hmm. Some people see them. Mm -hmm. So yes, that would be the vibration, the color that mm -hmm. they are seeing. Some people feel them. So, you know, I would feel the vibration. Right. Because you know, it would make sense if you have a certain color, you'd be drawn to a certain thing. Right. In, in this case, we're talking about you know a certain occupation. Right. Because um, I believe whatever your vibration is, that's what you attract. And right. if Absolutely. you're low vibration, you're attracting very eh, stuff. Right. <laughs> if Absolutely. So I, it's just something that I'm very fascinated with: um, vibrations and and you know the whole power of intention, all of that kind of thing, raising your vibration to attract what you want. Um, and so, so that open. leads to the next thing. Sometimes mm. what happens is um, indigo adults, right? Mm -hmm. I said I work with indigos. Sure. So indigo adults, what sometimes happens is, is as children, we're squashed, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we're told, no, that's not right, and no, you're not seeing things, and oh boy, she makes things up, or whatever. Yeah. And what happens is, is there's a discord beside, between what your inner vibration, your true self is vibrating, mm -hmm. and what your outside is vibrating. Right. So there's this discord. Um, so what happens is, is I have adult indigos who come to me who are trying to get that vibration to line back up again. They know uh, that they have a sense of purpose, mm -hmm. right? They know they're here to make a difference, but they're having trouble getting it to line up. Mm -hmm. Like it keeps missing the mark, right? you know, and it's about getting everything back in line and trusting that inner guidance that we all have. So it would make sense as an indigo child that if the parents or someone's not aware of it to help them, that they're going right. to end up getting, right. like you said, lost in the shuffle somewhere, and, and then their vibrations will not be in line. Um, so how do you identify an indigo child? Well, often um, it's because there's so many more indigo children now than when I was a child, um, they're they're not taking no for an answer. They're very, you know, what's happening is that, is that they have a very definite sense of this is the way it should be, mm -hmm. and it's causing discord in the family. Ah. Or um, sometimes indigos are mislabeled as ADHD or ADD, mm -hmm. thus the special education, right? Right, right, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. interesting. Or um, the other is crystals, crystal children, who to me that? are very similar to indigos, Whereas indigos are, have the the very warrior aspect with mm -hmm. an, an A, mm -hmm. um, although sometimes I say you can switch that in with an O. Right. <laughs> um, crystals are more are have all of that intuitive sense of knowing that they're going to make a change, but instead of um, outwardly acting out, they reflect it in. So, hmm. so they beat themselves up. My wow. uh, my son's a, a crystal. He's. He knows that thing, uh, d there's a very difference between right and wrong. He's got all of the same mm -hmm. intuitive, empathic, uh, knowing that he's going to make a difference in the world type of thing going on. But then in s when he gets angry, instead of throwing things around and getting upset, you know, an outward appearance, mm -hmm. he shuts down. Hmm. Um, so sometimes you'll see kids who are diagnosed as autistic who aren't really. Are they acting as a filter? And then it's getting caught in the filter? Are they acting as a filter? Acting as a filter. So what I mean by that is that the indigos are going outward, but the crystals are, are bringing it inward. So are they pulling this this negative whatever they sense in, hoping to filter it out of here? Is that is that, are they acting as that? Maybe I, don't I know, had just never thought. thought of it that way. That's interesting. And I'll then have it to gets check and then it, it gets caught in the filter because someone said to me once, if you're an empath. Right. And you, you're feeling depressed or angry, ask yourself, is this me? Are these my feelings or am I picking up someone else? Because they act as a filter. So I wonder if the crystal's acting as a filter, it's possible. but then hanging on to it and not maybe ask him, are these your feelings? Right. No, it's just anger I don't like. And maybe you could say like, oh, and see if that works, if it filters through. I don't know, just a thought. It is a thought, absolutely. Mm. And that's, you know, that's a lot of what working with indigos and um, crystals is about is, mm. is you know, working on that empathic piece, like, okay, so I'm an empath, what am I supposed to do with this? Right. Why am I getting this information? Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting to see how resistant 
older um, empaths are to putting a filter in between because this is the way they've operated in right, the world for right. so long. You know, I know I didn't figure it out until I was 33 mm. that I was picking up on others. And then it was, okay, now what am I supposed to do with this information? Right. You know, and it comes in handy as a teacher, you know, because or healer even, mm -hmm. because I, I can tell in my body how that person is feeling. So you have a website, because before we run out of time, I want to make sure we give the website. Um, tell me your website. My website is creatego, C-R-E-A-T-I-G-O dot org. Okay. And people can reach out to you through the organization. Absolutely. And so what kind of things do you offer? Do you offer one-on-one? -on -one? You, I know you offer classes, and, and, and we talked about that a little bit. What is... Um, what are, play shops, I think you call them. What, what is yeah, that? Yeah, I call them play shops. Play shops, yeah. Um, because they're, they're, it's about having fun, right? And remembering and learning is a lot easier when you attach it to an emotion. So mm -hmm. let's attach it to having fun, you know? And, it, and doing things, not sitting down and listening, but actually doing things. So um, I'm, one of my programs right now is uh, Reiki for Kids, mm -hmm. or Kids Reiki is what I like to call it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's working with kids, hands-on activities, as well as learning about their energy system, mm -hmm. and they are um, attuned to Reiki One when they leave. Wow! So that they've got the Reiki One under their belt, and and if there's an interest, then maybe we'll do Reiki Two. But you know, it's it's building off of play shops are built off of things that people are interested in, mm -hmm. crystals, right? You know, energy work. It's fun stuff. D is it helpful for the children when they get together to sort of form that bond with other? Indigos absolutely. or crystals and that, that kind of camaraderie. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's nice to know that you're not the only one out there. Mm. You know, and there's so many different ways to be intuitive. You can see things, you can hear things, or you can just know things. Right. So to know that you're not alone in being that way is fantastic. Now, do you also, when you're working with the kids, are you working with the parents as well and maybe bridging that gap of misunderstanding of who Absolutely. their child is and how to raise the child or do you do you work with that as well yes I actually have a program that um, is called conscious parenting mm -hmm. um, and it's about you know so many things I had mentioned that I got my intuitiveness from my family mm -hmm. you know kind of like brown hair and brown eyes right right you know um, but even though I got my brown hair and brown eyes from my mom the way that I'm intuitive is different than hers mm. Um, so it's about figuring out, much like the empath, what's mine and what's the child's, mm -hmm. and how can I best serve that child. Now, do you have on your website or, or something like a questionnaire that you ask people, if someone has a child that maybe they're labeled as troubled or ADHD, that they could come and look at it and go, does your child have you know, this, this, and that? Maybe and then they go. Oh, maybe my child's an indigo. Do you have something like that in place? Um, no, I don't currently have that in place. Usually, I just offer a free consultation on oh, okay. the phone. We usually discuss what's going on, and that way, there I can get a feel for their child. And then you'll know right away. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's so important to have those relationships. Mm. Um, I just met two children at an expo I did recently, and the ki the parents said it. You know, they brought their they're two beautiful boys. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, you know what? What workshops do you have? And I looked at them like, what? And they're like, our kids pick out the people in their lives that are going to work with them. And they just warmed right up to you. Oh, wow. So um, there's, it's really important to have that relationship, mm -hmm. you know, um, to be able to work with kids. What age group does, do you work with? Um, What's the youngest? I'd, I'd be fascinated with that. The youngest that I'm I'm working with currently is three. Was, that's what I thought. I, I was hearing three. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, I my background I ta I've taught for 25 plus years, mm -hmm. um, and I started in early childhood. Mm. And it's actually those early childhood kids who turned me on to that kids intuitive kids were coming through. Do most indigo children tend to get into the field of healing? I say it would make sense that they would. It would and it isn't. Remember, I said that indigos are about making a change in the world. Oh, so they could be anything then, right? So that they could be anything. They could be on television, they could be on the radio, they could be in politics, anything Absolutely. that's going to have affect change. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. And the way that they're going to operate is different. But um, because they need, you know, the world needs to change. 
So is there a theory, uh, the lady from in 1975 that came up with this, is, it, is does she have a theory of why they're coming, why they started coming, and is there an end result, or is there any kind of theories behind that? Well, the, th the general theory is that um, the planet needs to shift. Mm. You know, we need to be taking care of Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. And that's a general theory. I mean, I'm really, really making it very, very basic. Right, right. I'm not doing it any justice. But that's the, the general gist, is that we need to shift into the heart and operate from a place from the heart. Well, I mean, it makes sense. If you just watch the news for 10 minutes, you Absolutely. realize there's a lot of issues in the world that need changing. So it makes sense. Absolutely. Wow. Um, makes me think of all you need is love, right? That's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's really at the end of the day. Um, so what are the services do you offer besides the play groups? You, you do one-on-ones, I believe you said, uh, and, and do you also work with, do you sit with the parents and the child, or is it individually? So you're, you're kind of bringing I, everyone together? So I find that if we're doing individual, um, con individual work, I do work with the parents and, and you know the family unit, mm -hmm. um, and then I work with the child individually, and then we work at the family unit again. Um, and it's a way of bringing everybody together on the same page. Is, the, I, is there a standard um, protocol that you follow, or do you just sort of let the kids guide you on what they need? Well, it's all about meeting everybody where they are, mm. right? So I can't come in and decide, OK, we're going to do it <laughs> this way. Step one is this. Okay. Right. You know, the initial is a consultation, meeting with the parents, what's going on, meeting with the kids, what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's about affecting change. And, you know, in the past, what happened was it was a changing of perspective on everybody's part. Mm -hmm. You know, the kids, uh, they were middle school kids and the parents' part as well. And that made right. a big difference. Right. You know. Um, where do you do this? Do, you, do they come to you? Do you go to them? How does that work? Um, I have an office in Providence right now. Okay. Um, but I do have a car, and it works. <laughs> and you're willing to travel. And I'm willing to travel, absolutely. Absolutely. Are you able to work with clients outside the geographic area that they couldn't come to you, you couldn't go to them? Is that absolutely. possible? Absolutely. I can work over the phone. You can? Yeah. Skype or something, or just is just phone better? Phone, Skype, I'm flexible. Okay. And are you led by the children's guides when you're doing this? Do you tap into that and kind of... Yeah. They're helping you, like this is what is yeah. needed. Absolutely. It's my guides and their guides, everybody together, working mm. together. You That's know, really cool. and, and think about that, about having so often our kids are doing things out in the world, mm -hmm. you know, um, and think about having somebody with them 24 7 that they can rely on. Mm. You know, so you're putting them in touch with their guides and absolutely. letting them know what they're feeling is real and it's okay. Well, it, it's. Even more importantly, they're finding out that what they're feeling mm. is real. It's not what I'm telling them. It's what their guides are telling them. Right. And yeah, it is being facilitated and held by me. It's, it's, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that, you know, yeah. is important. The, the container is extremely important to allow for the best and highest good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just quickly, if they could put on the screen, if you have a question for myself, for the show, for Debbie, I can forward it to her. You can send an email to the holistic way at hotmail.com. It's on the screen, so you can take a look at that. Um, give your website one more time, because we're it's, almost out of time. OK, it's creatigo, C-R-E-A-T-I-G-O dot org. OK, and you're, are you a nonprofit? No. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I always ask when it's a dot org. Any closing thoughts, comments for people that might be listening with kids? You got um, about a minute left. It's just, you know, Kids in general really need this. They are coming through intuitive. Um, and it's just about giving them the structure to work through, just like we would have them, you know, stranger danger, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You don't have them just talking to anybody. Right. Um, these are safety things to keep them safe. That's actually a really good point. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. That's well done. Um, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Great job. Thanks. This has been The Holistic Way. I am Todd Hart. Thank you for joining us today, and have a great day.